We are talking sleep in a way that I don't ever hear sleep talked about on the show today with Dr. Peter Martoni. This episode is information filled, super engaging, super fun to listen to. You may want to check out the YouTube version, the video version. It's quite engaging. Uh, Dr. Martoni is demonstrating some of the things that he's talking about. So if you want to see the video version, check out my YouTube channel. It's just youtube.com slash coach chair Garrison. It has all my things, including the podcast there. But let me tell you about Dr. Martoni. First of all, he's been a chiropractor, private practice for over 23 years. He's also an exercise physiologist and kinesiologist. He is awesome. Um, he, I knew this about him, that he had created a product called the neck nest, which he will talk about why. And the why is really, really powerful. You're going to learn a lot on this show. Um, he's been featured on CBS, NBC, Fox. He travels all over the country, teaching people how to change the way they sleep so that they can reach their full potential. And it is very compelling. I loved this episode. We get into a little bit of ADD in there for a minute. He's talking about the neck and how it impacts our vagus nerve in ways that I haven't heard. Super appreciated this episode. I think you will learn a lot. And um, just want to give a little plug. He mentioned that he has started a certification for trainers, health coaches, um, so they can help their clients, help assess their clients' movement patterns, and then help them um, get into a more pain-free, fully functioning physiology. So, uh, very excited about that. So make sure you check out his website on that. We'll put all the links in the show notes. Um, you can go to necknest.com to check out the neck nest and drsleepright.com. And it's just dr drsleepright.com is where you can find out about that certification and do assessments and education and programs um, all sorts of things there. So make sure you check out that as well. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. Here is Dr. Peter Martoni. All right, Mr. Sleep tight. Is that what it says in the Do- background? Dr. But you're Dr. Sleep, Dr. Right. sleep right. Yeah. Well, Dr. I know, right. but it says sleep tight back there. Doesn't it? <laughs> oh, oh, it do- oh, that's right. Yeah, you- <laughs> There you go. Call me out on it. Absolutely. All right, guys. Yeah. You got to check t- out. The- so I was going to do a podcast, Sleep Tight with Dr. Sleep, right? I never, I never, got it. I never did it. Okay. 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 Well, this is it. This is it. You, you guys are on the Sleep Tight podcast and the Inside Out Health podcast. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, check out the YouTube version. We always have the video version of the podcast. If you listen on audio, you can check it out because we got Dr. Peter Martoni in his pajamas here. with over 20 years experience in chiropractic work and a bunch of different specializations, exercise physiology, you know, you've been around, you know, all you have a vast knowledge of a lot of things in terms of human health. And you have really shown up to the plate recently on sleep. And can you tell us why? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, thank you so much, Dara. I really appreciate it. We've been looking forward to this since we met and uh, love, love your energy, love what you're doing. But yeah, I uh, I zigzagged into the sleep world, and it's interesting. I am not, you know, my uh, my training, and it's funny how life leaves uh, breadcrumbs. But my training is exercise physiology. I'm a kinesiologist. I'm a structural specialist. I've been a chiropractor for 24 years. Now I'm in the sleep industry. Well, I didn't get into the sleep industry to help people sleep. Believe it or not, <laughs> I got into the sleep industry because you know there are two things when when you go into bed. Most people believe they can take advantage of getting better sleep, but nobody thinks about taking advantage of the eight hours that you spend in bed to improve your structure to affect your health. So so I I was looking at like, what are my patients coming in with? What are the most consistent issues? And then all of a sudden I herniate my own disc and I herniated my disc in a mountain biking accident. And I I had back pain at that point for a lot of years. And I, it was not a good place for a chiropractor to be because I'm trying to help my patient figure stuff out. I'm sitting in the emergency room hooked up on Dilaudid with a herniation in my L5. And I'm like, how can it come to this? So I started reviewing x-rays and and I, I reviewed 3000 x-rays and found when you damage the structure of your neck with the way that I was sleeping, it, you pick up with a psoas major muscle spasm in the lower back that twists the hips. And I was adjusting all of these hips the whole time when it was adaptation to a law in the body because of forward head posture. So then I'm like, holy mackerel, I can take advantage of the time I spend in bed due to Davis's law and start to restructure my spine. Let me give it a shot. Mm-hmm. I started sleeping differently. 
And from that point on, I've never had a disc issue and I'm in less pain than I was 10 years ago when I developed the uh, protocol. Okay. Let's dive into this a little bit because my, I got a really great massage therapist guy out in here, Hawaii. He's real, real amazing. And he's like, your, your hip stuff is your neck stuff. It all starts in your neck, you know? And he's, (laughs) so he'd probably love this. So can you talk about that? What do you mean with the forward head posture impacting your hips? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so I've come up with this protocol protocol called the Neurostructural Protocol, and it's based on law. And in law, there are specific laws in the body. Laws just like gravity, right? You can't debate it. It's how the body works. And your neurology adapts to these specific laws. And your bone, your structure adapts to adapt to these laws. So if I can teach people the laws and I can get them to master it, then they can become intuitive and then look past somebody's symptoms to be able to get at the root cause of the problem. And one of the laws that controls posture is called the writing reflex. And the writing reflex simply stated, and this is a law, this isn't, you know, you know, it's how the body works. Body posture adjusts to head position. So if you have forward head posture, your body is going to twist to compensate for that forward head posture due to the alignment of the eyes. So what ends up happening is when somebody has a hip that's out of alignment, you have to understand muscles and minions, they're being told what to do. They're being told what to do by the brain and the neurology. So if you have a muscle issue, the problem isn't the muscle. The problem is somewhere else, and it's usually in the vestibular or balance system. So when people always hurt their lower back or they always have a hip issue on one side or their knee bothers them on one side... It's normally in the brain due to this writing reflex and really getting to the core of what that is, is really the key in unlocking a lot of these problems. Mm. Wow. Okay. So somebody hearing that they're like, okay, what do I, where do I start? Like, (laughs) what do I do? (laughs) Thank you for helping me dumb this down. So let's look at like, like what is, you know, you know, if we look at somebody, the older the individual, the more forward posture they're going to have, right? So they're going to start, you know, is this a, a young, vibrant person walking, you know, hunched over a slunch, uh, or is this a young, vibrant posture, mm-hmm. right? So when you look at neurology and you look at brain development, you also have to look at balance. So when you are atrophying your brain, you're going to lose balance and then your posture is going to slump. So if posture and balance are that tightly connected, in order to strengthen the brain and rebuild the posture, you can work on balance. So Mm -hmm. I'm talking about working on balance, not just, oh, yeah, 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 look at me standing on one leg. Look at me standing on one leg. Yo, you're on a flat surface and it's concrete. And, oh, I got great balance. Look at me. Yeah, muscle structure is holding you up. Uh, that's not the balance I'm talking about. I'm ta- talking like a slack line where you can't stand on something or a wobble board, like a go fit wobble board or something like that. That's a really hard wobble board to use, not a BOSU ball, but a, but something that really challenges your your platform of what you're standing on. And, and you try to balance on that. You start balancing on that. You train the neurology to stand up straight. Wow. All right. I'm gonna have to start. I don't ever do that. A slack line. I mean, I'm going to give myself a zero. <laughs> well, I did this for ADD, right? Because, because when you, when you start to lose your balance with the ADD mind, it slows the spin and becomes more anxious. So I ended up buying a unicycle. I do not recommend buying a unicycle. I do not recommend that because you're going to kill yourself. And I almost did kill myself, but I got good at a unicycle. I started, um, you know, I started to uh, be able to like track stand on my bike and just sit on my bike without putting my feet on the ground. I mean, I went deep into wow. really tough balance and uh, and it was a game changer for anxiety. OK, before we get into because I know we're, we're going to get into what you the, how the neck position and all of that is impacted during sleep. But let's hit on this real quick. What are you talking about with the spinning and the ADD and anxiety? <laughs> all right. I just. So great. Sorry. Um, there's a um, specific portion. I think you and I did this. Remember, we had talked about somebody coming around and I said, I guarantee you he's cross dominant. So yeah. we had an interaction and yeah. uh, and you know that th- there's I, I just did this podcast and uh, 
it went in a totally different direction talking about ADD. <laughs> quick way to analyze if you or you think somebody that you love is suffering from some sort of anxiety or attention deficit disorder, that, that ADD type of symptomatology, I even hate that name. Mm -hmm. To know if you are, it's called uh, it's called a cross-dominant individual. So somebody that's right-handed should be, their dominant foot should be their right foot. Their dominant eye should be their right eye. And their dominant ear should be their right ear. That's mm -hmm. called fully lateralized. Mm. Somebody that, let's say, let's say you point at something in the distance. If you close your left eye and that finger doesn't move, and then you close, then you close your right eye and the finger moves, that means you're right eye dominant. So nice. whatever eye you close, if the finger does not move, that's your dominant eye. That's how to determine your dominant nice. eye. So if you're right-handed, left-eyed, you have a gift. That that gift is a is is called um, ADD. It's just a type <laughs> of brain that requires a lot of spin to keep it focused. Mm. Now, spin in brain health, a lot of doesn't come from nutrition. It comes from proprioception. It comes from your awareness in space. What what that means is eighty percent of all the proprioceptive signals are in your are in your cervical spine. So as you move your head, you know, your body is maintaining itself in a specific space. Well, the cross dominant individual has an, a specific portion of their brain that's atrophy, that's not developed. And that's called your vermis. Hmm. Within that vermis, one of the major roles of the vermis, if you Google this, is to build the prefrontal cortex, which is executive functioning. So the ADD avatar is going to be tight. They're going to be restricted in their movements. And they're going to have some balance issues. So when you know, understand that, you can develop the vermis and therefore develop executive functioning, create wow. less anxiety by working on your balance and challenging that range of motion. And then also improving the structure of your cervical spine. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. I, um... Definitely. And we, I mean, we established this, but I always said, I was like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm, I'm right-handed, but I can only dribble a basketball with my left hand. Or like when people are like, are you, are you goofy footed or not? I'm like, I don't know. I get, I, I get. <laughs> and when you did that just now with your hand, like I definitely was left eye dominant, but I'm right-handed, you know? And so, um, I'm going to get a slack line out here. You, you have a gift. Okay. Let's just say <laughs> you have a gift that and gift comes with high anxiety, you know, you know, internalizer yeah. you rationalize the heck out of your brain you, you, right there, i've had to manage that <laughs> uh-huh and you know it's funny because i did it one of the dna tests that i did that i really respect these guys they they get a bunch of different you know dna predispositions a bunch of different and they were like you have an 80 you're in the 88th percentile likelihood of having adhd i've never been diagnosed with it i don't you, you know you have it don't worry about it <laughs> Let's embrace like, can... it. Let's love it. And let's, <laughs> let's support our strengths. And, yeah. And... <laughs> okay. I'm getting a slack line, you yeah. know, and I'm pretty sure my son would probably be diagnosed with it too. If we went that route and he's, he loves to do that kind of stuff, right? He got a unicycle. He begged me for a unicycle. So, um, yeah, we'll get the slack line. Thank you that I've never, ever heard anybody talk about it that way. So thanks for sharing that. Well, All right. I have it. I I'm it's at such a visceral level for me because I've had the severe anxiety that comes along with it, the unexplained underachievement, the, oh my God, you're so happy you shut the door and you emotionally break down uh -huh. behind the door. <laughs> like, like uh -huh. I, you know, that, that, those challenges I had to, I mean, you know, I had to break down one time and I had to like figure out because, you know, we, we're high competitive people too. And you need to be like, like what's, I need to figure out what the hell is going on in my brain and, and get at the bottom of this. So I did a deep, deep dive for like five years nice. to really figure it all out. Well, I will add that. Yeah. I've definitely learned I can only handle so much and there's only certain parts of the day where I can be on point. And then I will literally just be staring at a screen and reading the same thing over and over and nothing is getting processed. And so I just learned not to work in those times a day <laughs> if I can at all avoid it, you know, or do different types of things. So yeah, always looking for solutions, but wow, what a great insight. Thank you for sharing that. And then kind of going back to, you were saying like typically 80% of your 
uh, proprioceptive receptors are in the cervical spine. So mm-hmm. let's talk about sleep. And cause I am a side sleeper fully. Like when I, I was going through your stuff and I was like, man, I don't know if I could sleep on my back. Like I, that I used to, um, try, I just like, couldn't. So tell us about what you've discovered. Cause I know you said you were a side sleeper forever too. Right. And let's talk about with the shoulder issue and the hip issue. Let's just yeah. talk about, let's talk about your avatar in the person okay. that's, that's out there. Right. Yeah. Well, the person that has anxiousness or, or, or trauma in their life or anything like that, what are they going to crave? They're going to crave protection and security. Mm-hmm. So in order to fall asleep, you need to feel safe at a subconscious level. Totally. I'm not talking about consciously. We're talking about subconscious because you can't right. think yourself to sleep. You have to remember yourself to sleep. You need to be in a space mm-hmm. where you can shut down give and give right. in. If at a subconscious level, you don't feel safe, you're never going to be able to fall asleep. It's not that, and, and it is the positioning of that. It's mm-hmm. because certain positions stimulate specific nervous systems. So when you are lying on your back, right. you feel exposed. Right. That is a sympathetic state. Most people that have that cross dominance, they need power, they have an issue with their parasympathetic nervous system coming down. Mm-hmm. That's why when you see somebody that, is a high functioning individual. They have digestion issues, immune system issues, and then hormonal imbalances. It's because they can't get into that parasympathetic state when they sleep. So with somebody like you and I, we need to, we need to recognize that, love that, look past the reason why you can't sleep and understand it's because you need to feel safe. I'm not talking about safe where you think somebody's going to stab you. I'm thinking, talking about subconscious. Uh So to stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system, we got to use pressure, Mm. pressure on our chest, pressure over our eyes, sleep mask, put something against your side, create a safe environment, lock your doors, put an alarm on your house, close Mm. your windows. You know, there needs to be a, a sense of safety to be able to even get you to fall asleep on your back. And then at the beginning, most people can't fall asleep flat, especially when they have ADD type of symptomatology. They need to sleep slightly elevated because when their brain's yeah. back at that position, it's you, some, you wake up and you feel like you're falling because yeah. most people with the ADD is, are going to have this constricted frontal plane posture. And when yeah. you open up lying on your back, you're yeah. never going to be able to do it at a subconscious level. Mm, wow. Okay. So tell us, uh, how you went through this process, you know, cause you were a side sleeper. Yeah. Can you, can you tell us a little it's bit just, about that? What was this like for yeah, you? Yeah. Well, so I, I'm a big firm believer. If the why is big enough, the what doesn't matter. Right. Right. So my why was, am I ever going to be able to practice again? My legs numb, <laughs> you know, right. you know, I have this herniated disc, the only way I was going to be able to heal it as far as what I found on on, on the, these, this x-ray evaluation was putting my neck into a specific position at night, taking getting rid of that psoas spasm. Mm. And so I just forced myself to do it. I would, uh, and then I, I was stuffing, rolling up towels under my neck. I was, I, you know, at, the, at that time, I didn't know as much as I know now about how to maintain that posture, which yeah. is what I teach. But it's mm-hmm. um, I knew enough that I needed to get an arch in my neck to release the rotation of my pelvis. So I didn't have that. I also had a labrum tear, but that mm-hmm. was way beyond my, my, my back issues. So, so I had hip issues and back issues. And once I started to get that neck back while I slept, everything just started melting away. Wow. I told, I need to get one of your neck nests, which we'll talk about in a sec. You know, I have a funny story because we have some mutual friends. Um, I know, you know, um, uh, Dr. Pompa and oh, I was friends just with him. See his event for the whole weekend. Oh, really? Okay. So one time I was uh, spending some time in Utah with Dr. Pompa and also Dr. John Laurent, who I'm sure, you know, <laughs> and one of them, one of them like did something with my neck. I think it was John. And, and he goes, he goes, Oh my God. God, he's like, feel her neck. <laughs> and Dr. Pompa goes, Oh my God, it's a mess. And I was like, It is. I had no idea, you know? And so that's when I really started going and getting massages and things. But I fully admit, I'm still sleeping on my side. Like it to me, it's like, 
Oh my gosh. I don't know if I could. So let's talk about the neck nest. How can the neck nest help me? <laughs> well, well, so now here's the thing with the neck nest. This is, so we were selling the neck nest in offices across the country and stuff like that. And I pulled way back on that because really, yeah. So okay. this is, this is what I ended up doing is mm. I ended up creating a certification program for trainers and in uh, health, uh, well, uh, health professionals. Okay. Because if the why is big enough, the what doesn't matter. So one thing that I have realized, and I thought that what I did, I mean, I have people flying from all over the world to come and see me. Uh, and I thought what I did was special because I'm very intuitive, right? So I can look at people and I didn't mm -hmm. realize, you know, I had my right. head shoved so far up my arm, so special ass. I'm like, oh no, it, it's it's me. It, it's I'm so special because I'm intuitive. I'm an intuitive healer. I get it. I love it. I love intuitive healing. But <laughs> when somebody explained to me what intuition was, then I realized, holy crap, I can teach people this mm. and have them be able to see people the same way I do. Then they'll see that the neck nest is more of a how and not the why. And then when they build the why, the what doesn't matter. Mm. Intuition is just a subconscious recognition of mastered patterns. Yeah. So your subconscious is looking it, it. So I've mastered for specific patterns and these patterns are based on laws. And once they're based on law, they're so reproducible that my subconscious can look at somebody and know it's wrong because it's looked at thousands and thousands of people the same way. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that makes sense. I That's something I can teach. I can teach the mastering of the law and I can get trainers to train differently. I can get a, a chiropractors to adjust differently because they'll be armed with the same neuro the, the same understanding. Mm. So then now, then now, now the neck nest becomes a solution. Like somebody like you, right. You know, in your history, I'm not, you know, you know, there's probably strep throats when you were a kid, there's digestion issues when you're, there's issues when, when, when we're children, that 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 we typically bring through our our life and then once somebody starts to explain that listen you're a product of your daily rituals and one of the biggest opportunities we have is the eight hours we spend at night right. yes to get great sleep but also use that time to restructure your spine and it'll be a game changer nice. for your health now, you know, I like efficiency. You know, I like yeah. that. <laughs> Two things at one time, more production while you sleep. Oh, are you kidding me? This is unbelievable. Cause like bang, bang like this. And that hyper recovery, yeah. baby. That's, 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 you speak my language. Yeah, right? and, and you want to increase your HRV, improve your HRV by 30%, just change the position you're sleeping in. Mm. Because what happens is the structure of your spine also suppresses parasympathetic nerve function. So because 75% of your entire audit, a parasympathetic nervous system is from the vagus nerve, which gets jacked up when you lose the cervical curve from sleeping. Wow. So now let's wow. get into the neck nest. Wow. Or, or let's just talk about sleeping position. Oh, look at that nerve right there. That's the vagus nerve behind me. It's my, my the wandering nerve. It's my it. most beautiful nerve. And most people have problems there. And everybody... You're going to get me on a tangent. I, let me get to no. sleeping position. Uh, you can tangent. We'll get there. <laughs> All right, good. Perfect. So the wandering nerve. Look at this, baby. Tara, come on. Look at this thing. Like, look at this nerve. That is the most beautiful draping nerve of the entire body. That's wow. immune system, digestive system, reproductive system. And most people have problems in all of those areas and nobody looks at the function of that vagus nerve mm -hmm. as the problem. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, when you're, you, when you're, when you have a cervical spine, it should be curved. Most people sleep on their sides and they do this to their cervical spine, which destroys the function of the vagus nerve. Wow. It's going to also affect spinal accessory, which gives you tight traps and also glossal pharyngeal will give you a hoarse throat. will also, um, you have like food gets caught in your throat if, if you choke on food often. So when we sleep and we do this, that's improving our entire being because now you're stimulating that parasympathetic nerve. Most people think that their adrenals are shot because they're sympathetic dominant. I argue it's because you're parasympathetic inhibited 
due to the loss of structure in your neck. Wow. Wow. And this is so big because, you know, we hear about, okay, vagus nerve, breath work, yoga, meditation, all great. Right. But almost entirely, almost a hundred percent of the time neglected the actual structural component of you realize the part of your nervous system and you know how the whole spine thing and brain that's like yeah. nervous. System. This is completely neglected in the topic of vagus nerve health. Every time I, I literally, I think you're the first person that has brought that to the forefront in any conversation of the vagus nerve that I have had ever. They're not, Which no is one's the reason that up. I am in this industry. That yeah. is my main objective. That's what makes our message so much different. It's that nerve, you know, right. seeing people for 24 years with the same right. problems day in, day out, digestion, hormonal. Right. I can't get pregnant. My kid right. has exercise induced asthma. It's I'm sure terrible. I'm pissing off all the chiropractors right now. They're like, you know, I see that every day. <laughs> but yeah, you see that, you see that down, the trickle down effect yeah. of 50 million different issues that will be caused by the vagus nerve, not being able to function purely because it's inhibited. I love what you're talking. It's not you're thinking more in terms, less in terms of parasympathetic dominance and more in terms of considering I'm sorry, sympathetic dominance and considering right. parasympathetic. It creates the same state. Right. Right. Love that. All right. Neck nest. Yeah. We get- We're okay. jamming, Tara. We <laughs> are jamming. I love it. All right. Let's talk about it. How this, you know, do, do you still sell them? Can people still get them? I do. Is yeah. It- you can go okay. on necknest.com. Okay. And then starting January 1st, people can get certified in the neurostructural protocol. Nice. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay. So um, neck nest for people who can't see, what's the basic okay, idea? Neck nest. Okay. With words? So neck nest is a soft, you know, compressive type of, uh, I, I don't even want to call it a pillow because a pillow defined is a support for your head. <laughs> so it's a nest for your neck. Now, nice. Tara, let's explain one of the laws that we talk in our our protocol right and that is if you don't use it you lose it we've heard of that before right totally and then i mean everybody understands that you understand it i understand it (laughs) but then on the other end we're all looking for more support what does support (laughs) do support weakens right anytime you support something you weaken it Right. Uh, Misha Tate is a, a friend of mine. Do you know Misha? Mm, yeah, yeah, she's great. Mm-hmm. And she gave a talk at, at, at one of my events. Mm-hmm. And this she was great. great. It's impacted me and I'm still talking about it. Scientists tried to try to build this beautiful, perfect tree on, you know, in this perfect environment, gave it all the perfect, you know, air and soil and gave everything perfect. And as the tree grew, it toppled over fell over. Why? Because it didn't have the adversity of the wind to be able to build strong roots. Right. So we, our bodies adapt to adversity and, and we need to learn from that in all growth happens, you know, with stress. So when you just take stress away and you nurture that little, that little neck and you hold the whole head <laughs> and you support everything, you're destroying the structure because wow. it's weakening it. Wow. Now, what's the opposite of that? Some sort of stress. So we're going to use distraction, which will gently stretch a curve into the neck. So we can use the weight of the head wow. as this little weight to gently stretch a curve back into the neck. Now, when I show you this position, People are going to be like, oh, my God, I can't do that. There's no way I'm going to be able to sleep like that. I can't sleep like that, right? Just like you said, there's no way. (laughs) Here we go. This is how we start. We only start with one hour a night. You are only in control with how you fall asleep. Let the subconscious brain take over the rest of it. Because I know if I give your body the best chance to fall asleep, it'll be a game changer for down the road. So -hmm. let's just think baby steps. Like, what about Bob? Baby steps, Mm -hmm. baby steps, Mm -hmm. right? The baby step is let just put your body into this position. Let's say an hour a night, even if you don't fall asleep, I don't care, right? Just put yourself into this position, get that stretch in there. And then you're at least doing it for one hour a night. Okay. I love it. Yeah. Okay. I know I yell. Am I yelling? Oh, 
I love it. Be passionate. Let's go. <laughs> so the neck nest is designed. Let's uh, probably get a little, I'm going to do a little demonstration here. Okay. Okay, cool guys. Check it out on YouTube. My YouTube channel is just coach Tara Garrison on YouTube and you can find all the podcast videos. If you want to come see him do this. So neck nest is angled up and then it goes underneath my neck. So now what's happening? My head is not supported support. So I'm using there. The neck nest is under my neck and the weight of my head is off the back of the neck nest, like a slinky gently stretching a curve into my neck. Nice. And when you, it's Smart. like a hug for your neck. When you put your body in that position, certain things are going to happen. Yes. Somebody might snore. Then we address that. Somebody's low back might bother them. Then we address that. I have tools to address all of the, the, the um, objections that come from sleeping in that position. But we, we have to have an anchor. And the anchor is it is so important to maintain the health and well-being of the structure of your spine because it affects the integrity of the nervous system. That's the anchor. It, regardless of we're talking about conflatic drainage, you know, at night from sleeping on your left side. I know all the studies are reported. I've looked at all of them. They don't, mm. they're not looking at the right stuff. Mm. Okay. Let's go back to, you're talking about intuitions, you know, and it's funny too, because yeah, once you've been doing something for a long time, you've got so many data points in there that it's just like, oh, I just know right where to take this. And there's a quote that I, this is what I was going to add. Uh, it's from Sherlock Holmes TV show. Okay. I don't watch the show. I just found this online That's once. And great. I was like, I that is it. the best quote on intuition I have ever heard. And it said intuitions represent too many data points for the conscious mind to comprehend. So good, right? <laughs> so good. And so, all right. So what I'm taking from what you said there, you writing it down. Yes, intuitions represent yeah. too many data points for the conscious mind to comprehend. Okay. So that's basically what I'm hearing from you. Just let's take a, just a quick moment on this, you know, certification for, who did you say it's for health coaches? And it's going to be for yeah, anybody that it has somebody in front of them, like a, um, let's say like a trainer that right. wants to train a chiropractor that wants a chiropractor. It's an analyzation process nice. of how to look at somebody nice. and tell them, you know, somebody, people come in with problems, right? It's the way to look past their problems and get at the true cause of the, the of the condition and Excellent. serve to what they truly need, not mm -hmm. what they want. You know, because a lot of people want, what do you want? Oh, I want to exercise, you know, lose weight with no pain and, and you know, be right. the, 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 the best. Well, let's now talk about reality, right? Yeah. And uh, And I need people to be able to predict what the next four weeks will look like, the next month will look like, the next two months mm -hmm. will look like. And then you're going to be also able to understand what their previous past looked like based on what the neurology looks like today. Then you can implement our protocol for only four weeks, then your protocol after that. So it's going to be a way to be able to teach people mm. how the body adapts with whatever um, you know modality that they use. That's excellent. Because yeah, there's a lot of different like little assessments. And I'll be, I mean, I started my career in personal training, right? And like, you know, it's all right. You have your functional movement screen, which is great and stuff like that, but there's not, it's really like, okay, noted their, uh, glutes are inhibited or, you know, but you, what you're doing is helping them see on a much, much deeper level, like a lifetime of dysfunctional patterns and then where to take them from there to correct those patterns. It was somebody with background in exercise physiology, you know, extreme knowledge of biomechanics plus over 20 years in chiropractic work, that is extremely valuable. I'm just going to give you a, like a huge, huge plug for that right now, because that is super incredibly valuable. How, what does the certification look like? Like, what is it? Is it remote? Is so it we're, we're starting to certificate. You can launch it. We're only taking 50 in our first group and then 50 in our second group. Okay. Um, so we launch it January 1st. It's going to be uh, remote. So it'll be online videos uh -huh. and then it'll be uh, uh, chat with me once a week for an hour, right? Wow. For eight weeks. Wow. So it's eight hours. And then there's one in person nice. here at nice. a, a fitness facility. Okay. So we have the whole uh, fitness facility. It's a huge, huge um, gym. 
And, um, and then we have breakout rooms based on you. Like Excellent. if you're a trainer, breakout room for trainers. If you're a chiropractor, breakout rooms. You know, if uh, for sleep, everybody will go through our sleep training and they'll right. rotate through the uh, modules. Excellent. Uh, person. And where is here? Oh, Boston, Mass. Boston, Boston Massachusetts. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> People are like, we could tell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Wow. Thanks for sharing that. Okay. Um, all right. Let's get just a little bit deeper, if you don't mind, into um, you were talking about something else was in the middle of sleep that pinged me off. And I can't remember what you're saying now, but can you talk about, um, other impacts that you see like of, uh, the structure being impacted negatively in sleep, or does it really all stem from the neck and you're like, just fix that and you'll fix most well, things. Well, there, there are three reasons people toss and turn, right? One, we talked about that's safety. It doesn't feel safe. So it's going to curl right. up in balls. Second one, because of temperature regulation, you, people's core temperature are running too high because you either exercise too late, the detoxing, hormonal imbalances. Mm -hmm. And then the third one is because of pain. Mm -hmm. So pain is the most common one. The average person will toss and turn 40 times a night. And, and so what ends up happening is I give people the challenge, right? Tara, I give you the challenge. So this is a challenge. All right. I want you to watch a two hour movie in the position you fall asleep in. Oh my and, gosh. And there's no way in <laughs> hell that you're going to be able to do that. Cause I guarantee you it's like I did. Right. Right. So it's, it's curled up like this. Yep, just like that. Jacked up. And yep. so what it, that means is your weight is not distributed over the greatest surface area. So you're creating pressure points on your right. shoulder and your hip. Right. So give me a side sleeper and I'm going to give you a shoulder impingement or a frozen shoulder. Right. Give me a side sleeper. I'm going to give you neck dysfunction. Give me a side sleeper. I'm going to give you hips that are rotated. And that's because of Davis's law where the structure remolds based on the stresses that are applied to it. You know, so if you want a bent arm, all you have to do is take an arm and bend it for a month and it'll have a, you'll have a bend in your arm. So if you want the, the, the structure and the body to be out of alignment and have bad posture, just sleep on your side and eventually you're going to have bad posture. That's yeah. why you can look at people and tell them what position they sleep in. Wow. Amazing. Okay. Uh, snoring. Can you talk about, actually, can you talk about snoring in general? Like, sure. do you have, what's, yeah. what's the, what do you want to know, Tara? What do you what's want the know? root cause of snoring? I'll root be cause real. Of snoring is I'll airway real, dysfunction. Never... So is what? I, airway dysfunction, not knowing how to keep your mouth closed, right? It's yeah. a, it's a neurological issue typically. So hmm. like if somebody drinks alcohol, they'll snore more because, because their, their tongue will fall back in and their, their throat uh -huh. will start to collapse. Now, this is great on snoring because I'm glad you bring this up because it's a big reason why people say I can't sleep on my back because my jaw opens and my tongue drops back into my throat. Well, I've, I've, uh, so I've, so I've been punched to my side, right? You're snoring, you're snoring. So then I wake up, I stop, and then I'm like, okay, under, right, you're snoring. You never snore. What happened? Oh, I had three tequilas last night. Okay, now I understand why I'm snoring. So what can I do? Well, I know based on the, the anesthesiologist did a study, and it's based on head position. It's not based on alignment of, of how you're sleeping. So it's the angle of your head. So if you are snoring, try this, and this, this may work for you. Angle your neck back more. That opens up the airway, and it will eliminate snoring. Wow. So snoring is a positional issue due to the, the, due to the, um, you know, due to the neurology because you don't know mm. how to keep your tongue sucked up to the roof of your mouth, but also due to the position that your head is in when you're on your back. Most people, what do they do? They use a pillow a support for your head that does this, that closes down the right. airway. A neck right. nest does this. You keep, there's no way your tongue can get back there to cause you to snore because wow. the airway is so open. Wow. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. I never used to snore, but it's caught up to me. All of a sudden I'm snoring now. I'm like, ah, <laughs> why am I snoring? <laughs> All right. Time to fix my neck. <laughs> yeah. Well, All the right. problem is going to be is, is if you have a neck that John and Dr. Pompa put, you know, their hands on, 
<laughs> and in that more than likely, which I would, I would, I think I might've mentioned to you. I, I can't remember. I did evaluate you. You've you lost the cervical curve. You have uh -huh. degeneration at C5, C6. Degeneration at C5, C6 addresses the larynx and the glossopharyngeal nerve. So mm -hmm. that is a reason why you also stop, you'll not now, because I know you said no to all my issues. But you might have uh, like you might get reflex down the road or or there might be uh, your hands might start falling asleep when you're when you're sleeping. Okay. But that's all related to the neck. OK, wow. Thank you so much. This has been so invaluable. Are there any other last sleep tips that you have for people beyond this? Yeah. So and I think this would be good for you, too. Thanks. And and I had touched on this and I, I just did a did a uh, Instagram or TikTok on this. We're like my number one way to have people get to sleep and stay asleep. Mm -hmm. um, what I mean, obviously, core temperature dropping, right? Be able to temperature regulate hands and your feet out of your covers so they're not covered. So your body can temperature regulate, use your hands and your feet as radiators. Mm -hmm. That's number one. But number two is in order to fall asleep, we need to take the energy from the front part of our brain, front front part of our brain where we think. Mm -hmm. and bring it to the back portion of our brain where our sleep centers are in our memories are categorized, right? Where our conscious memories become subconscious memories. Mm -hmm. So, you, it, and most of us control freaks like to control something. So you can't think yourself to sleep. So when we close our eyes and we relax, it's the first time a, 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 a sympathetic dominant is able to relax and you can start thinking. It's an addictive time to think because you finally come down and your body can start to process information. So we think, think, think. It's going to screw you up. Mm -hmm. The last five things you think about before you go to sleep can destroy your entire sleep pattern. So we need to focus and understand that and recognize that and focus on remembering ourselves to sleep because you can still focus on one of those. You can focus on thinking or you, uh, or you can focus on remembering a memory in the past, make it a good memory. Mm -hmm. And like I, I go through my mountain biking trails, right? Like a 10 mile mountain biking trail. I'll think of everything about that. You can think of a fitness thing, a walk. And once you put yourself to sleep once on that memory, keep mm -hmm. thinking about the same memory night in, night out, and you'll go to sleep like that. Wow. That's an awesome tip. And then did you say you were going to share about staying asleep? Well, so... Or do you if have more you, on falling asleep? Yeah, that's more on falling asleep. But if you fall asleep in the subconscious brain, you'll stay asleep. Okay. Right? If you okay. try to fall asleep thinking, you're just going to get it. exhausted and your brain's going to stay in that sub, uh, that, that like transient area and you won't we'll get great REM sleep and, you'll, and your brain will be a mess. <laughs> okay. This brings in mind another question. Cause I get sleep questions a lot and I'm like, eh, I just turn people over. I mean, I have some stuff, but there's much more experts like you on sleep than I am. So I'll ask some of the questions I get asked a lot. The whole, why do I wake up at three o'clock every morning? Don't look at the, do not look at the, um, so if you wake up at three o'clock in the morning, there's some sort of trigger and you also have liver dumps that happen right around yeah. certain period of time, right. detoxification things. I mean, yeah. we're not, well, yeah. you know, we're not going into any right. of that type of stuff. <laughs> there, are ex there are other experts for those types mm -hmm. of things. But yeah. I just want to know your opinion. So if we, if we wake up at the same time, normally we're training ourselves to do that. Something happened right around that time. You wake up, you look at the clock, you go to the bathroom, right? you know, and if you, if it's always that you have to go to the bathroom at that time, you got to do something about your hydration. You should right. have most of your hydration done four hours before bed. So now, all right. Now you're not waking up. You're waking up, but you don't have to go to the bathroom. You wake up, you look at the clock and you're like, oh my God, what the heck am I doing? When you wake up, don't open your eyes. Keep mm -hmm. your eyes shut because you know you're awake. You know you want to look at the clock. Shut down. Just just don't even look at the clock. Don't give your brain the, the satisfaction right. of trying to lock into that time. Wow. Don't give it the satisfaction. <laughs> Bite your subconscious brain and say, forget about you. I'm <laughs> training you. I own you, right? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it's pattern, uh, right? So uh, so much of it is just this uh, pattern. It's like, well, this patterns. is what we do. All right? neurological patterns. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah. It's kind of like, I mean, for me, most of the time, like I have my alarm set at five, but most of the time I'll wake up at like four 58. It's just like my body just knows. So That's I'm like, the wow. best way to do it. If you're waking <laughs> up with an alarm clock, you are chronically fatigued and you're ruining uh-huh. your, 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 your just, it's one of the worst things to do. Snooze and snooze again. You're just, mm-hmm. you're chronically fatigued and you're killing yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've learned for me, you know, maybe this ADD conversation earlier is helpful, but like, I have to start my wind down about three o'clock in the afternoon. It's just like de-stimulate, 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 calm, 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 calm. And I actually do sleep pretty deep, but I go to bed really early because I have found just through my own experience, if I can get to sleep early and just wake up on my own early, oh my gosh, that is like the best life there is. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I agree with you on because I, I did this one more, life. Well, I'm going to give you one more tip. So I did okay. this right right before. I, I have a little scent. Doesn't matter what your scent is, right? Nice. Uh, you'll you'll see me. I'll use it a lot. I probably use it a hundred times a day. And what I've done is I, um, you know, I, I I like a little meditation device. I got into meditation. I used uh, the Muse, and then back in the day, just to be able yes. to calm my brain. Yeah. I'm from a, I'm from Boston. I'm Italian. The word meditation, I would tell go you to jump in a lake, right? I I like I couldn't come down. I just thought it was like so foo-foo. And then uh-huh. and then I ended up going to this like awakened spirit retreat. And and I I think I found myself there, but I started mm-hmm. meditating after that. Nice. And I found this little device where I need to control if I, you can control your breath and you will control your heart rate, you'll lower your metabolism, you'll lower your core temperature. And if you do that during the day over and over and over again, and you put a scent on your nose while you do it, wow. you will lock your subconscious brain in your your wow. your vagal tone to a scent. So anytime you use that during the day, you'll come okay. down like that. That's so smart. I love that. Yeah, you got the the tricks of the neurology side added into all the structural stuff and it's super valuable. So I love that. Thank you. All right. Um, where should we direct people? We, we don't have a sleep tight podcast guys, but it's no, coming. We, we, we have, <laughs> we, have we have educational programs at drsleepright.com, drsleepright.com. If you're interested in that protocol, you can just put your name on the waiting list and I will personally be in touch with you because I need to make sure this is right for you as it is with Tara, because I'm going to have Tara go as a thank you. She's going through the program also. Oh, <laughs> you're thank gonna, you. You're gonna oh, man. You're going to love okay. it. So so then uh, if they want to purchase the neck nest, make sure the neck nest is right for you and you're ready for it. Watch the videos on how to use it, stuff like that. And if you're and if you vibe and you want to get way better sleep, awakening a well-rested aligned you, that's our mission mm-hmm. at neck nest then go to necknest.com, N-E-C-K-N-E-S-T, necknest.com, and then you can find out more there. Wow. Awesome. And then also what's your Instagram social media handles is Dr. Yeah. there. So right? Instagram is, is Dr. Sleep, right? TikTok, Dr. Sleep, right? Facebook, Dr. Sleep, right? Is it D-R or spelled out? So it's D-R sleep, right? The only one. And I don't know why this is Facebook made it doctor sleep right okay but, okay uh, yeah. all right all right you'll find him you'll find him thank you so much this has been just been like jam-packed with amazing info you can tell you've spoken about this a few times they're so very well spoken super fun to listen to super engaging so thank you so much for taking the time all right thanks sarah